Today I'm going to be demonstrating this macaw and colored pencil against an airbrush background and I'm giving a little bit of a review on the new airbrush paints I've been using. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. For this piece, I am working on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm using polychromos and luminance for my colored pencils with a Derwent Drawing Chinese White. I'm using brush and pencil touch up texture with titanium white mixture for some of the highlights that you'll see me painting on this. And the airbrush paint, this is something you've not seen me use before. I'm using a lot of Holbein's airbrush paints. The reason that I decided to try these out is they're not supposed to clog your airbrush as much as the Createx do. and it was true. They're kind of amazing. They cost a bit more, but oh, did I love them. I love them enough that I went and bought like 20 more colors. So worth it though. I'm in love with these paints and it's not that the Createx are bad. I'll probably still use them here and there, but they do clog the airbrush a bit more often, quite a bit more often. And these ones, I wasn't having that problem. So these are probably going to be my new go-to airbrush paints. If you are supporters over on Patreon, this week's tutorial is three hours long. That is by far my longest Patreon video yet. Normally they're one to two hours, but this one, I just wanted to keep things a little bit slow so that you could really see how I was moving the pencil and how I airbrushed this. Now, if you do not have an airbrush, you can still get a very similar background. I did a live stream recently showing you how to layer that and get the out of focus background with your pencils. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. Now let's go ahead and move on to this tutorial. Before we get started, I want to explain how I'm able to airbrush this but keep the white of my paper white. In this case, I have drawn everything out with a 4H pencil. I used a very light hand. As you can see, you can hardly see the pencil lines on this image. I then took a piece of frisket, which is essentially low tack tape that is clear. I taped that over the artwork and then I took a black marker, traced around the outline of my macaw. Then I just took regular scissors, cut it out and put the tape over the macaw to protect it. Now you have seen in past videos and I'll Put a link in the, the description or a card will pop up so you can check that out where I use masking fluid around the edge in addition to the frisket. Here I didn't need to use the masking fluid to paint anything out because the edges were very very smooth. I don't have a lot of feathers sticking out or, or ridges and stuff like I would with animal fur so this worked better just to use the frisket but that is how I'm going to protect it while I airbrush. For this piece, I'm using a combination of my regular Createx airbrush paints that I've thinned out with water and the Holbein acrylic or airbrushing paints. And the Holbein paints are my favorites now. They are amazing. My airbrush didn't clog once. I didn't need to thin them at all. They cost a little bit more, but I think these are going to be my new go-to airbrush paint just because they were so much easier to work with. Now, the trick when you are building up a blurry out-of-focus background like this is just not to put the airbrush so close to the paper. I don't want fine lines or fine details. You can see detail. You can see that I've got rope in there, but it's not so, so sharp. You don't want the edges to be very sharp. You want them to be slightly fuzzy out of focus, which is funny because that's typically the look that new people to airbrushing will get when they're trying not to. So if you've never used an airbrush, you're going to be able to get the blurry out of focus look, no problem. But what I've done for that branch is I outlined everything that I wanted and did a lot of the shading with the black, and then I came back on top of it with my brown tones. You can see that background, it almost looks like spray paint that's just very messy. That's okay. I'm going to come back on top of that with my circles with a stencil. I'm just using my white paint for this. Once I get all of those circles in, right now it just looks like white circles. I've got to make sure that they overlap. That is very important. I don't want it to look like polka dots where they're all separate. Very, very important. Overlap those. Once I get finished adding some of the white highlights on that branch, I'm going to come back through with this bright kind of yellowy green color and go over all of the circles. And it's just going to push the background together with those circles and help it to have that look, that depth that I really want there add a little bit more detailing and color onto my branch. Now for this branch, I don't need it to be perfect. I Once I do the branch on the other side of the macaw, the side that is going to be very in focus, I'm going to take some of those colors in the colored pencil and lay it on top of this branch that I've airbrushed just so that I pull those colors together and it really looks like it's all a part of the same thing. I don't want it to be obvious that these are two different mediums. So I like to take some of that color and put it over the airbrush section in this case. I'm going to start on the macaw with the colored pencils. I'm starting with his beak. And one of the things that people will do a lot, especially with birds that have a dark kind of almost, it looks like it would be all one color beak, in this case the black, is that they'll just draw it or paint it solid black. That won't give you a very realistic look. Look at all of the colors that I'm laying in here. I am keeping a very, very light hand, locking in my lights and my darks. After I get most of these dark areas in, I'm going to take gray over everything. And then I will blend that out with my Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner once I get enough pigment on the paper. 
Now this is very fuzzy, very dark. I don't have a lot of detail. It's not done. I want to add a lot of layers on that, but I've got to let that dry. While that dries, I'm going to move over to the eye here. My base layer on the eye was just a very, very pale gray. And then I will add different shading on top of it. For these feathers that are on his face, I started with a medium gray color and I'll end up adding black on top, but I want to let both of those show a little bit. It's an easy way to get two tones on those feathers without having to do a ton of detail work. Just do them all in one and then add a little bit of the black on top later. Back onto the beak, you can see I'm adding these details. I'm using my white luminance for most of the highlights there. Now, all that's going to do because I'm going up against the black of the beak that I've already done is create a light gray. I'm not really going to get it back up to white white. Anywhere where I want it to come back to white, I've got two options. One would be to have left the paper, the white of the paper showing through. Once you go this dark, you're never going to get it back to white. The other option is to use the brush and pencil titanium white and touch up texture mixture that I will paint on with a paintbrush. And I have a video showing you how to do that for details. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out. On to the face. The face, the skin on the face is white, but I don't want to leave it flat white. I've talked about this before, where white is never just solid white. If you do that, it's going to look very unnatural, very flat. Look at all the shading that I'm doing in here. And right now, it all also feels a little bit too dark. Once I get the rest of the feathers on the face around, it's not going to be dark enough. I'll come back and add more shading and more detailing. I'm using a lot of pale peach colors, some purples, blues starting to block in some of the feathers on the head, the green areas. Getting some shading with the black on the area, the bottom portion where the green meets the white of the skin. Now I will add more highlights as I go with the white luminance pencil here. You can see it does show up. I've got to create wrinkles. These aren't veins in the skin, they're actually wrinkles. So I've got to make sure that they're not just plain lines. I've got to fade from areas that are light and then they kind of curve down into the shadow. So I don't just want to put lines everywhere because that moves from looking like raised skin, that wrinkly, it's almost like elephant looking skin, that type of wrinkle. If I just do straight lines, all it looks like are veins, which is definitely not what I want here. Adding more of this blue, you can see this starts to look like I'm going way, way too dark, but watch when I come back through with the feathers, you'll see that I could actually safely go quite a bit darker than what I've got here. So working on the shadows in the skin here, again with the pinks and peaches. And at this point, nothing is actually finished. I'm going to continue to build more contrast on the beak, more highlights on the face. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture. I will have a link to where I got that in the video description. And I'm using a number two synthetic hog haired liner brush and just lining in some of the highlights here. The great thing about this product is if I go too light and realize, oh my gosh, that should not be white, colored pencil will stick right on top of it once it dries. I can put colors over it, whether they be translucent, so they now just look lighter than what they would have on their own, or I can cover it completely with darker colors. This stuff is very, very forgiving if you get out of control with it. But I was easily, you can see the highlights on the eyes, so easy to do this way, much more so than if I were to use just the straight colored pencil by itself. By itself, that colored pencil is never going to pull this up this white. More detail and ridges on the beak. Remember when you're drawing this type of a beak, the beaks are very similar to fingernails where you'll have ridges where and chips and such like stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you're capturing that when you've got a close up of an animal like this. Now, if he were pretty far away, then yeah, you would probably only see the black of the beak. You're not going to put so much detail into that. But when you're this close, make sure you're capturing all of those ridges. It will make your work look so much more realistic. Building up the base layers for the feathers here. In your base layers, it's going to be normal for it to look pretty much like crayon. It's not going to look super realistic like that painting look that I'm going for. So this is just your base layer though. I'm going to lay down color. I will blend it out with paint thinner. It'll be very fuzzy looking. It'll have that grainy gritty look that I personally don't like in most cases. And that's okay. That's your first layer. That's totally normal. You're just going to continue to layer until you don't have that anymore. Now, depending on the type of paper you're using, if you're using something like Bristol Vellum, 
that is not going to allow you to get as many layers so it's harder to lose that grainy gritty look it's hard to get the color saturation you want so the paper you're using will make a difference in how many layers you can do so it's not always just how much pressure you apply because I, I talk about that all the time you don't want to push very hard and damage the tooth of the paper sometimes the paper is just too smooth on its own and so it's going to make it very difficult to do a lot of these layers where I'm adding the black. Notice that I don't ever leave it straight black. I almost always layer purples, blues, magenta, other colors into it, which gives you a much richer tone. And you can see the feathers under the, the beak right there, those dark, well right now they're dark purple, those are going to get much darker. So this is where I was talking about your first layers, they may not look like what you want, that's normal. You're going to add so many layers. If you're using these techniques, it's going to need a lot of layers to get it to that end result where your colors are very rich, very bright, vibrant. So don't get frustrated if you're not getting the look you want after a couple of layers. I am missing a video clip right there where I worked on the neck feathers or those black feathers under his beak. But essentially, I just kept layering blacks and purples and then blending it out with the odorless mineral spirits. Then I took my lavender, what is it, violet gray, I believe it is. It's Viluminance. I cannot remember the name right now. But I added the detailing of the feathers just along the edges there. Now for this next section, we're going to make, move over it pretty quickly because it's actually from the live stream and I'll put, have a card pop up so you can check that out. But you'll be able to see in real time how I did a lot of these feathers on the next step. Here I'm using that touch-up texture, titanium white mixture again. Right now these lines are too white, but it's okay. I'm going to let that dry and then take yellow over it, which gives me a very pale yellow. If I just did yellow over the colored pencil, the yellow is very translucent. It's not going to show up. But by putting that titanium white touch-up texture mixture, it's very similar to how I would do glazing with oil or acrylic painting, where I add the white, then add the light color that's super translucent on top of it so that I get a much lighter version of that color and it lets it show up over the darker colors that it normally wouldn't be able to. So this is the part from the live stream. Like I said, we'll move through this very, very quickly because you can watch this in real time. And it's just a layering process. I get my light colors and after I've outlined the feathers, then I start building up my shadows and highlights on each feather, blending it out, let it dry completely before you move on to your next section, because if you don't, you can either damage the tooth of the paper when you put a pencil over wet paper, or the pencil may just not stick very well anyway, even if you're not worried about damaging your paper, it just doesn't work very well. layering more and more this is just there's so many layers to get the color to be as rich as you want it to be now the trick when drawing feathers like this this guy's kind of fluffed up so his feathers are somewhat separated more so than if he was kind of sitting up straight or the wind wasn't blowing and his his feathers are more sleek looking you have to be careful how you build these up because if you overdo the shadow in between all of them you can turn this into looking more like scales than feathers so there's a fine line there because these ones do need to be separated being that the wind was blowing and, and separating those feathers but I don't want them to be so separated that he looks kind of like like a fish or a dragon so I will be doing a lot of layering and then layering in this case where I'll take one color and go over the lights and the darks to kind of pull everything together a little bit better moving on to the next feathers here again just blocking in where my lights and darks go I don't worry about the detailing being perfect I don't even worry about the color being perfect it really doesn't matter at this point I just want to get most of the white of the paper in each section filled in now as you can see I'm working in fairly large sections if you have a hard time where that seems overwhelming do one feather at a time you don't need to work in these larger sections I do this because I feel like I'm saving a little bit of time but what happens if you're especially if you're newer to colored pencil when you're working you go through the ugly stage lasts for very long because it's a slow medium to work in so if you can break it up one feather at a time complete that feather so it looks great it's a little bit more encouraging when you look at your work and go okay this part looks amazing so I know I can do this instead of one large section at a time when you do those larger sections that ugly stage lasts for so long that a lot of people will get discouraged and not feel like they're going to move out of that ugly stage and they give up so it may be better for you to do one single feather at a time. 
Another big tip that I have for you is look at each of these feathers as abstract shapes. Don't look at it and say, okay, I'm painting or drawing a feather. I think that that's another way that can feel very overwhelming and things tend to not come out right because you start to think, oh, I know what a feather looks like and you draw what you think it looks like, not what it actually looks like. Look at that reference photo. Really pay close attention to that. Work upside down if you need to. Well, the art, not you. That might be an interesting video, but turn your artwork upside down and the reference photo upside down, and that's going to help you to see shapes and shadows as they are. Now, I don't worry that every single feather is exact. If I'm a little off, no one's going to notice if I don't have all the feathers that are in the reference photo, or if one feather's two inches to the right, no one is going to notice. I need the major portions of this correct, the outline of the bird, the eye, the beak, the feathers on the face. They, those need to, the large areas where the blue and the gold and the black are, those need to be in the correct place. But each individual feather, if it's a bit off, no one's going to know the difference. This specific reference photo is available for those of you over at Patreon. The video that's posted there, that reference photo is there too. But this was one of the Patreon reference photos for February. So it's not one that's available to everybody. But if you do want to draw blue and gold macaw, you're not a patron. You can check over at places like Pix Pixabay where they do have lots of photos of this type of bird. And you can use the techniques that I'm showing you here to draw another blue and gold. Lots and lots of layering. That's really with colored pencil, just all this is, is a layering process. As I move on to this portion of the wing, I'm using a dark gray color to block in the majority of these feathers. Then I'm going to take my blue and go over everything. I don't need to stay within the lines of each individual feather. You're not going to be able to tell that I worked over everything once I blend this out. And I'm moving my pencil for the most part in little ovals. It gives me a much smoother, more seamless transition from one pencil stroke to the next. Blending that out with my odorless mineral spirits. While that dries, I go back and work on these feathers. And the odorless mineral spirits are flammable, so don't use a hair dryer to try to dry it faster. It normally dries within a couple of minutes, so it doesn't take long, depending on the type of paper you're using. If you're using Stonehenge, that will take a bit longer. But it doesn't take that long. I just go and work on another area of the piece while I'm waiting for one section to dry. Coming back through and adding some of the details, you can see I'm mixing quite a bit of green in with a lot of these feathers. Green and purple. So within all of these feathers, I've got a lot of cool and warm blues. The cooler blues are going to be those that are closer to purple on the color wheel, whereas the warmer blues are those that are more of a greenish blue color or closer to green on that color wheel. As I blend out, it'll look like I lose detail or that the color is very muted, it's not as strong as it was before, that's just part of the process. I just go ahead and blend that and then add more detailing on top when it dries. The paper that you're seeing under my hand is glassine. I use that to protect the work from smudges or from any oils on my skin. I used to use tracing paper. Tracing paper does work, but the problem with that is that color can stick to it. So let's say you have some pencil crumbs on the paper. If it sticks to the tracing paper and you slide the tracing paper over, you can have it smear lines or bits of that colored pencil. So you do have to be careful with that. With a glassine, that won't happen because nothing will stick to it. Now we'll have, a, have links and of everything that I used in this video in the video description. So if you're interested in those specific supplies, those are located there. I let that dry, and apparently I'm missing a video clip. Once it dried, I came back on top for the edging of those feathers with the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture. I'm letting that dry now, and I will come on top of that with a light blue pencil. But again, you want to wait till that completely dries. Even if it feels dry to the touch, let it dry for several minutes longer, because if you don't, it can kind of chip or flake off. It needs to be completely dry, more so than just dry to the touch. Blocking in my next group of feathers while I wait for that section to dry all the way. One of the things that I do while I work, because this does get tedious, when you've got this many feathers and they all look pretty much the same, 
it can start to feel very tedious. You can start to get very bored with it. One of the things that I do, well, two things. One, I don't start a new project until this is finished because if I did, I guarantee you, I would never want to come back and draw more feathers on the same bird. The other thing that I do is listen to audiobooks. You can put on movies on, if you've got like a laptop next to you, something that you can listen to or watch or keep an eye on while you're working. I find that to be so much easier or it makes it much easier for me to stay still longer. So for me, the audiobooks are, are my first choice. But that definitely can make it easier for you to sit still for longer periods of time. But do make sure on something like this where you may be working for hours and hours at a time on one little thing, get up and walk around, go for a walk around the block, give your legs a, a bit of a stretch. That will also make it easier. There are times where I find I sit still too long and it starts to make it hard for me to focus. I lose vision or sight of what I'm doing. Everything seems blurry. So taking those little breaks will help too. I, what I try to do is get the feather mostly blocked in where my lights and darks are before I blend out. And each time before I blend out, I've got probably a good three to five layers of colored pencil over each other before I blend out with the odorless mineral spirits. What happens is if you don't have enough pigment on the paper, enough pencil on the paper, when you blend out with the odorless mineral spirits, it doesn't, it can't do much. There's not enough pigment there. So make sure you've got enough layers on there first. And here's where I took that the blue pencil and went over the white that I had painted in with the touch-up texture titanium white mixture. And you can see now, I can see the highlights of each of those, the edging of those feathers, those little ones on his little, I guess, shoulder. You can see those really, really well. They're not just white. White wouldn't have looked right, but I had to put white down first so that the light blue would show up against the dark blue that I had underneath it. So I'm moving on to the foot here going to make sure that pencil is really sharp for those nails. And the nails are the same as the beak, where I start with one dark color, but I'm going to add highlights, little ridges here and there on those. And those are going to be very shiny, so I would need to have highlights on that anyway. Now the challenge at this point for this branch is to make sure that while this side is in focus, and I do have areas where you can see where the bird has been chewing on it or it's kind of worn down, I've got to make sure that this branch still feels like it's the same branch from the other side that is airbrushed. I don't want it to be obvious to the viewer that these are two different mediums, that these were done at two different times. So this is why I've got to take some of that color that I'm going to use on the branch and pull it onto the other side so that they really, really blend together nicely. Got a lot of shading in here. This whole section is very, very dark. Once I get that on in, it's going to be much more obvious that I need to add more shading on the gold section of the feathers. They seemed too light until I start getting these darks in next to them. Just really paying attention to that reference photo. And it's not that every line has to be exact. I don't think that that's important. I need to be very close. I need to kind of follow the direction of the feathers, make sure those are all the same. I want to follow the direction of the ridges on the branch. Branch And this branch, this section of the branch, I made much wider than it was in my reference photo because I accidentally made the other side of the branch too wide when I was airbrushing. So I had to balance that out over here. So obviously it's not exact, but I do want to go for semi-close so that I capture the feel of that texture. Adding some shading here on the feathers. I want to make sure this bottom side of the this wing is a bit darker than the back just because of how the light is hitting him. Using this pumpkin color, this is the one that I'm pulling into the branch. You can see right over the airbrushed section, and it's it really shows up well. The nice thing with using the airbrush with colored pencil is that the they work well together. You can put colored pencil on top of it, no problem. Now you would not want to airbrush over colored pencil because the colored pencil is having all of the wax and the oils in them. The airbrush paint is water based, so those aren't going to mix well airbrush over colored pencil. But you can do the colored pencil over airbrush just fine. Just want to make sure when you do mixed media that you're doing it in the right order because some orders won't play nicely together, like putting a water-based product over oil or wax-based. The nice thing with this branch, it, I went through it very quickly. It's a fairly large size or piece for colored pencil. I, normally that would take a really long time, but I was able to be very loose, very sloppy with it because I need those ridges in there. So I didn't have to be careful with the teeny tiny little circles like I might normally. I just almost scribbled to get that look which gave me that rougher texture that I want. 
coming through with this pale silvery blue using the luminance there which is going to be one of my more opaque colors if I want fine, fine, teeny tiny detail, my polychromos are going to be my go-to pencil. When I want more opaque colors, then I'm going to reach for my luminance. Now that I have all of these feathers in, look how white that face looks. It seemed like it was way too dark. I had too much color before, but now that I've got all of the, the feathers around that, I can definitely go a lot darker than what I have now. Sometimes it's hard to judge your values until you get the areas around any given area blocked in. When I was up against the white of the paper, it seemed so dark, but it clearly was not. Prepping up the shadow under some of these areas with my black. Just adding little details in here. Again, not exact to the reference photo. I just need to go for close. It's at this stage of the drawing that I step away from the reference photo. I generally will put it away completely and just focus on what I think my piece needs to improve on. Do I need to darken an area that isn't as dark in the reference photo? What is going to make for a stronger piece on mine? So you'll see where I darken up when on the final photo. You can really see. I darkened up a lot more on the white of the face where I pulled more blues and purples for the shading. My reference photo, that area was, was a bit overexposed. It was solid white. I knew for mine it would look better if I added more... The, what little shading I could see in that reference photo, I came through and just hyped that up a lot more with the blues and purples. And I think that it definitely improved on that. So that is it for this piece. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, all of the supplies that I used are listed below in the video description. I should have taken video, but the reference photo that I used here was one that I took at the zoo, and this bird was hilarious. He's on this huge, amazing outdoor perch in the trees, and he just kind of hangs out with and talks to people, like literally talks. He kept saying hello to us. He'd raise his little foot and, well, big foot, and say hello, hello, and he kept doing it over and over again. This is when I took that photo. That guy was an absolute crack up, and now my husband thinks he needs a blue and gold macaw. I don't know how many of you guys have ever owned parrots, but my parents bred them when I was a kid. We actually bred blue and golden cause. They're noisy and destructive and they eat everything, like everything. Walls, doors, windowsills, closet door. I got in trouble for that one because that was actually my fault. Not that I ate the door, but that I let the bird stay in access to the door and wasn't watching and yeah. Parents weren't happy about that one. But I need to convince him that the shoulder chicken is enough bird for us. Wait, don't leave. I'm done talking about animals. Have you already subscribed? If not, there's a button right there. It's round, orange arrow, can't miss it. If you have not already subscribed, hit that and that will help you to keep up to date with all five of my new art videos every single week. I'll see you guys tomorrow.